What does it actually mean to build a metaverse? And how do you go from building one of the largest retail chains to going all in on Web3? Welcome to Goats in the Metaverse. I am excited. We have some special, special guests joining us today. Yasi, are you excited? I am extremely excited for this show. A fortune of learning for our audience. Uh, really going deep into the world of the metaverse and we have some special treats for you on this show so make sure you watch till the end we are interviewing two legends in this space isaac gindy ceo of isg and co-owner of century 21 the retail group where we've gone and shopped for some great bargains well we're going to tell you about the great bargains in the metaverse today with isaac and the creative director of isg Blake Hotz, who is coming in live from the metaverse himself. Look at Blake go with the Huzzah. goats. <laughs> Hi, Dick and Blake. Welcome <laughs> to the show. What a pleasure. Welcome, Let's go. Welcome and, and thank you again for having Isaac and I. Let's rock and roll. This is the first, this is legendary breaking moment. This is the first time one of our guests is actually in the metaverse speaking to us. And I'm right, I'm directly in VR right now, too. I've actually got on full body tracking, so I've got six point tracking on, those are my tootsies moving, and I can also do a mean hip rotation. <laughs> and I've actually, I've actually got on my Tesla suit as well, so I can actually feel sensations in here, like the rain, like the wind. Um, you know, pretty much ready player me status, it's used with electro stimulation, but we'll talk more about that later. But it's a pleasure to be able to show, you know, from the actual perspective in VR. And uh, as you can see here, we built a little barnyard for the goats in the metaverse, baby. I've even got, whoa, they even uh, made me move. We got my little, my little stand goat. Let's go. <laughs> That's me. Look at that. That's my dad. And here's little Yossi. What's up? Man, they like kibbles. <laughs> Yossi <laughs> Gun is looking mess. good. <laughs> He's strong. Oh, we, want, we want those. I, I think those are going to be our new avatars. Oh, the dude. Show. They are ready for you when you're in here, baby. Let's go. Seriously, though, thank you again, guys, for having us in here. I love it. Isaac, how you doing, baby? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I have my goat's hat, which uh, is my prized possession. It's a collector's <laughs> item. I wear it everywhere I go. And uh, that's because I love the show. And um, really, we're really thrilled to be here. We're thrilled you guys are here. And like I said, this is the first time in history one of our guests is live from the metaverse so this is record breaking news over here let's get right into us uh would love to hear the backstory isaac tell us a little bit about yourself and the background of who you are and how you came to start this journey well uh i was born in brooklyn and uh I moved to Manhattan when I was 18, and I always loved Manhattan because it was the center of culture, creativity, and fashion. And I consider myself an urbanite, and New York City is the greatest city in the world. And when I got into retail, I went into my family business when I was 23, and I loved fashion, and fashion was my whole life. And I started as a stock boy and I worked my way up to uh, the position that I'm in today. And I always believed in the cutting edge. And for retail, we always wanted to make an immersive experience or an experience that was exciting. When the internet came along, we jumped right in and we loved it. And then Web3 came around and I was totally enamored by it uh, for many reasons. One reason is because New York City to me was the coolest place in the world. And I wanted to make the metaverse the way New York City used to be. Now New York City is not really like that. You used to get into a club if you were an artist, if you like Basquiat, you got in, if you had no money, if you were creative. But now if you have money, you could get into any club. It's not, it's not the center of culture and creativity and fashion that it used to be. So I wanted to create this in a decentralized, decentralized metaverse in Somnium. Somnium, the reason I picked Somnium is because it's the really true 
3D experience. It's something that's just incredible. It's based on the city of Prague. There's only 5,000 parcels, and it's a beautiful place. When I go in there, it's kind of a place that I would love to live in because it's just so beautiful, and the community is amazing. And that was the journey that we took. I met Blake, and we started to build our dreams inside Samu. So when you say your dreams, you're, you're literally coming up with the vision of what does this metaverse look like? Uh, what does this metaverse feel like? And you guys are starting to build something that like, what, what, what's the goal? Why, what, why, why would somebody, if somebody's watching this show and they're trying to understand kind of how do they become a part of this or why they should become a part of this? What, what's kind of the goal? What's the vision for it? It's a great question. So basically the goal is because Somnium is the really, it's years ahead of all the competition. And uh, it's the true 3D virtual reality thing. So my dream, I, I have a lot of real estate background, so I slowly started to buy parcels. I have 26 parcels now in the best location. And uh, we started, I started to think, once I got these parcels, what am I going to do with them? So I needed a builder. So I, I contacted Blake on Instagram, and immediately we hit it off. So... Bill that Blake awesome. introduced me to uh, all the people there. See, Somnium is, is really for creatives. And I really am not commercial. Like I said before, Somnium is decentralized. And I really want to be surrounded by creative people, fashion people, cool people, artists. And that's what the community is in Somnium, all these people. So we started to build a gallery our first gallery we built with uh, my NFT collection in it. That was the first step. And then from there, we I had a vision. And I said, you know, I want to build an entertainment center. I want to build uh, a stadium. I want to build a retail where people could go and see. And then we got introduced through Somnium, uh, the Tesla suit. So now the Tesla suit was the missing link, which is becoming a reality, which the Tesla suit, which we invested in, uh, ISG is an investor in the Tesla suit for full disclosure. But when you put it on and you go into Somnium, you could actually feel sensations. You feel the rain. You could put your arm around somebody and feel it. You could pick up a drink and, and feel the sensations of the drink going down. It's actually, nobody has it. We're so far ahead of everybody in the metaverse that it's so exciting to me to get this thing going because it's really creative and really fun. And what happened was, so we invested in this company, Aletheia AI, and we had a meeting with Arif, the CEO, and we wanted to bring him into Somnium. So we want, and when we brought him into Somni, we had a meeting with Arthur, the founder and everybody. And then we realized that because of virtual reality, which is an unbelievable experience that nobody has, nobody has, but Somnium, they perfected it. You only could get 70 people at a time. So Arif said, listen, if you're going to build me a place, I need to get 100,000 people at a time. I want to bring my community into Somnium. So this was a stumbling block for us. So immediately I spoke to Blake and Blake got the community. In Somnium, there's real community builders that are really advanced. And we put together a team. And our major goal, because you're asking me this question of what the end result is, our major goal is through 2D, which is on your PC, we could get 100,000 people in, and then from there, we could spawn them into 3D and 4D into the stadium, into the amusement park, and into the shopping centers and the stores that we're building. So, again, what I want to say is what we're doing, people wish they could do. We're two or three years ahead of anybody in this space. And I have to give the credit to Blake and to the builders of Somnium and to the founder 
because these people put it together. Within one month, we're going to have our stadium built, which I would like you to put up a stadium over there. The stadium, the people are going to come into the website. We're going to have live entertainment. We're going to have professional people come in. They'll come in through the 2D site. They could also come in through the, the, four, the 3D virtual reality site. They're going to mesh together. They're going to be sitting in the stands. They're going to be watching an event. It's going to be as if they were really there. So the ultimate goal, here's the ultimate goal and my ultimate vision. That's our stadium. So people could be, I could be in Brooklyn. You could be in, in, my, in Milan. We hop in. We buy a ticket. We get into the, into the metaverse. We get into the stadium. We watch the concert together. And then after the concert, we go to the after party. We're going to have an after party in the Malibu Beach House. And after we have the after party, people could go and shop. Now, with the tester suit, you could go into a store. You could try on an outfit. You could feel it. You could feel the fake fur. You could feel the, uh, the fit of the... We could show you what we designed with our avatars. Now you feel it. You walk around. You could rent it in Somnium. Or you could mint it and buy it. And then the ultimate goal is to ship it to your home. So that's really from A to Z of what our goal is and how we envision the metaverse and what its function is going to be. So, Isaac, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, <laughs> wow. Boom. Stuff that, you, that, <laughs> you've, uh, that you've discussed there. But before we go into all of that, and then, Blake, I want to go into your background as well. Uh, Isaac, if you don't mind sharing, just how old are you? You know, Web3 is supposed to be the space of 20 to 30 year olds, come, and then all these kids coming in and saying, Isaac this is, is the 21. Future. Isaac is 21. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> senior citizen. 21. I'm a, a senior, senior citizen. citizen, but uh, that's a great question. Uh, look, being on the cutting edge and, and the world is moving at such a fast pace, I want to be involved in it, you know, and I want to contribute and make the world a better place. So by being involved with this, actually, it keeps me young, keeps me happy, keeps me motivated. It's something that I love to do. It's not work. And it's, every day is an adventure. And the real key is what the contribution of ISG is going to be to the world is we're going to marry the physical with the metaphysical and be it intertwined and be one place, which I really think the future of the world and that's where it's going as i explained before the physical will merge into the metaphysical into the metaverse and it's going to become a way of life and i want to be one of the forerunners in that and that's why i picked somnium because being loving art and loving creativity their 3d virtual reality stuff is just so great it looks like i really like i spend more time in somnium than i do in the real world i love <laughs> so I, you know I it's just that. kind of fun you know what i mean and i want to that's my end goal to have fun so that's why any, we're in web three yes. that's why we're in web three if I, you're I not having fun you're not doing it right let's go like can we can blake? we let, let's go to blake yeah let's let's let blake Tell give us a little bit of a up. tour all right, a little huzzah. Well, I just want to touch real fast too. Like Isaac and I's relationship is such like a, a new age way of doing business and things. And, and when he did reach out to me on Instagram, you know, he slid in those DMs. Um, uh, you know, it, it was so funny because um, you know, I, I just texted him back. We immediately FaceTimed, and I'm on my way back from Dunkin' Donuts, about to go shred it up in the metaverse. And uh, and we just hit it off, and he and he's just been such an amazing real world uh, example as to one the impact uh, of a of a fresh perspective of the metaverse because in here within the metaverse there is no construct the construct is your imagination so when you hear a fresh perspective from someone coming from the outside it's like the most amazing thing and isaac as as a absolute monster in business he's such a successful individual with a beautiful mind uh, for creativity he came in here like totally fresh in his ideas and uh, along with the community within here has built, you know, we're all building something that's never been seen before. And the reason is because it's the Wild West and we're building what we see fit as, as all can. But my background and hello, all you goats out there, baby, if you don't like and subscribe this video for the goats, then what the hell you doing, baby? But my name is Blake Hotz. I'm a creative partner at ISG. 
um, and founder of the Hots House, an artist musicians group um, here in the metaverse. I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, I grew up here in South Florida. I went to Full Sail University uh, for show production, but I got into advertising, um, was running advertising, small business uh, up until COVID and uh, moved back in with the parents and uh, started a Twitch channel. And that Twitch channel over time, uh, building artists, musicians, doing boot camps and things that my goal always remained the same. It was to find a stage um, to give these emerging artists more listens, more ears, uh, because I found so many superstars uh, just in their bedrooms, you know, making music living day to day. And, and the same goes for the metaverse and, and finding NFTs and finding Somnium space um, was truly my dream. It, it was a place where we can bring people together. And, and my whole love of, uh, of humanity is connectivity. It's connecting groups of people and, and bringing them together and, and to work on a, as an ensemble. And uh, I found in the metaverse here, we're all pieces of this puzzle working at our, uh, you know, for our own dreams, but somehow it all fits together into this big picture that we've never seen before. And, um, and I, I, I have to say, building ISG with Isaac, um, you know, and building things like the Orbital City, uh, the Gindi Stadium and, uh, you know, inside of our, um, you know, inside of Somnium Space allows for people to connect around an idea or art, uh, like allowing for artists to create. And that's where communities are forming, connecting people from around the world. And it's developing a whole new way of looking at, uh, at creating and also unplugging the way that creators are used to making a living um, in their daily life and, and plugging in a new where there are no real limits. And so uh, like for all of you watching and going, what the hell is this guy doing? I'm actually in full body tracking right now. So I am wearing six point track. I'm also wearing my Tesla suit, which we which we uh, noted a little earlier, which is a full body haptic suit. Check them out. Um, it's an electro stimulation uh, suit. So it's not built on vibrations or sound. It's actually built on electro st stimulation like shock. That's why they don't have any crotch sensors. So for all of you guys out there wondering about those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so Blake, you're in a Tesla suit, whatever you're doing right now, just for our audience. Yes. Like it's yes. happening, right? You. Let me show you here. Let me toggle on my camera really quickly. Whoa. Hold on one second. Boom. Here we go. What up? Oh, there he is. Look at Let's this. Let's go. And see, I got I got my trackers on. Don't mind my pretty blue shorts. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, so so I'm in a Tesla suit and also make sure you go huzzah. Um, but yeah, see, I'm I'm here in VR and full body tracking, and um like this is the most insane way to so, experience. So when you say you environments. like when you say you feel something wet, what does it feel like? Like tell me, just describe the situation. You're wearing the suits, you walk through rain. Tell sure. us what that actually like experience is like. So it's it's really interesting because we're actually at ISG developing these sensations as well. Like a, a Tesla suit is, is affiliated with the military and like NASA and shit. So I can't really say the sensations that they have naturally built are, are very, uh, very nice. Like it's like bullet enter here, exit here. And like, <laughs> you know, so we're building these things like rain sensations. And so um, the way I can describe it is that you have to first calibrate your Tesla suit. So setting a minimum and a maximum like uh, threshold, essentially. And then you have to set the, uh, you know, the wavelength of the stimulation or shock that comes out of it and there, there's a bunch of nodes all over so you have like you know your for your top of your forearm your bottom forearm these have um you know you remember you know those pads that people used to put on their abs to get ripped and stuff like that it's kind of like that but super high tech and inside the suit so when you feel the rain um and your and your calibration is way too hard like what i did during our documentary with sergey i was going to i was trying to be an iron man and <laughs> had him calibrate it really high the rain felt like acid rain or boulders falling on me uh, all over in little spots. But with it actually calibrated cor correctly, um, it feels like it, it feels like rain. If you if you don't have your headset on, it'll feel like, um, you know, if it'll feel like little pinches, like little little pieces of your skin are getting tightened up, you know. Uh, be, but but the, the whole point about VR and, um, you know, is is tricking the senses into believing you're somewhere. And, that, and really, what is reality when your mind and your eyeballs are what's perceiving it? And so now we're kicking into these next senses where it's now touch. And um, the way that this electro stimulation is, it's sending pulses to these uh, locations in which things are touching. Uh, reaction, collision, uh, collisions are hitting on certain parts of your avatar body. And, uh, and, it, and it's pretty wild when you, when you actually you know, jump into the water and you feel the water up to 
your waist because all of your lower extremities uh, are constantly tightening, um, you know, and, and feeling like it's flowing. And, and when you like my big thing is I want to feel music. I want to feel like the, the way that someone's heart is beating you know, as they're near me, like, you know, and like, um, you know, you can essentially, we're designing that. So the, the, the thought is, and, and Andre said it very well in our documentary. If you haven't seen that guys, you can check it out probably inside the links below. Um, but he said, simply look around. And that's what we're trying to create is the sens sensory experience that you have in a daily basis. So uh, it's, it's very hard to describe. It's just like saying like, what is blue? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, it's a very interesting thing. So Blake and I guess both Blake and Isaac, I mean, do you obviously what you guys are doing, like you said, right, is years ahead of, you know, of what like brands and NFT projects are saying we're building our own metaverse. They're you're they're still trying to work out the kinks of how they're going to do it. Sure. Um like what do you see? Like what's going to happen in the next two to three years, right? Like what? Give us kind of the visionary outlook of. I know you touched on we could go see a ball game together, but let's go deeper than that. Sure. Like, are we as a society going to now kind of live in this world almost full time? Is this is this kind of is uh, are we you know Isaac? If if instead of having a Zoom call, is are you going to say let's meet at the Malibu Beach House and I'm going to put on my VR set and we're going to go you know, throw balls together? Is that what you guys see as the future? Um, actually, you know, I think it all started with COVID where uh, people were afraid to congregate with other people. And that's where this thing really started to uh, take traction. I think that it's a, it's a combination of both, mm -hmm. but it, it's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. The internet was unstoppable. NFTs will be unstoppable. Uh, but I think this is the next version of what's going to happen in the world where people are going to want to congregate. They'll feel safe. They go to places together while they're really in their living room. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to Paris, you just go into the metaverse and you're in Paris. You're walking down the Champs-Élysées. You go into the Chanel store. You meet your friend from Hong Kong. It's going to become a way of life. That's what the future is going to be in the world. And the added thing that we have is the sensations, which nobody is near yet. And the sensations is going to meet, make it even more of a realistic trip. You're not going to be able to stop this. It's uncontrollable. And it's something that I really believe the way the future of the world is going to be. It's going to be physical and metaphysical. To us, we live it every day. So we understand this more than most people. When we introduce things to people, they're a little bit hesitant. They don't understand. And like now you're seeing Blake, he's in Orbital City. Once we bring them in and they see what it's about, that's it. Seal the deal, case closed, you have them for life. And then, so Isaac, yes. You've been in retail for quite some time. Uh, and obviously you see this as the future of retail. How do you see that playing out? Like, why is this so exciting for you as a person who's been through the highs and lows of a retail business that you think this is the next frontier that people should be paying attention to? It's a great question because retail started to change with immersive experiences in the physical shops. You know, uh, they were all built around what could happen in the store. You go to suffrages, they have the whole main floor with all kinds of new experiences and things like that. Everybody has merchandise. Everybody has the same kind of a atmosphere in the store. So what would bring people into a store if they had an experience, if they had something that would make them more enjoyable, something to make them stay there for a while and have fun while they're there? So that was the first thing, like we developed next century and century, which was the next thing where we had events and we had we had collaborations with emerging designers and we had after parties. And and that made century a place where people wanted to come and be. So now I think like then the, the Internet came and everybody was worried about the Internet. And the next step is to merge the physical, for example, like in a, in a store. Like, let's say a Prada store, we could put a couple of headsets and this and that, and people could go into the Prada store, the physical store, 
and then emerge into the Prada store in the metaverse and get another experience. So it, it's going to enhance and make retail exciting to be back into the phase. That's the, that's the way it's going. And it's what, and, and, and Isaac, and I think it's a great point. My question to you would be like, clearly you're thinking about this years ahead and we know that every single day, big brands are out there trying to figure out what part they're going to play in Web3. Uh, we see the job ads. We see, you know, the, the companies being hired, millions of dollars being spent as far as saying, how do we as a brand enter in? We know Nike has entered. We know Adidas has entered. We know Prada has entered, Gucci. So what's your advice to these brands? Like, what, it, what, what do you say to them? Uh, if somebody approaches you and says, hey, we want to get into Web3, but we honestly don't know how, what, 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 what's your advice to them? My advice is everybody wants to get into the metaverse. They don't understand it. So they could be making a huge mistake by going into a 2D metaverse and being an expert in fashion. Uh, you know, I don't really want to mention name brands, but like a lot of Lux brands went into certain metaverses and it was only 2D and because they're dying to get in, but they don't know where to go. So they went in and personally, they prostituted their line. It looked like crap. It was only 2D. My advice to them is to relax. Don't rush in because you took years to build your brand. You don't want to tear down your brand in one shot by going into a metaverse that you don't know anything about just to be trendy. If you come into a place like Somnium, which we're having the fashion show on September 7th in Prague, which we're going to be doing a world of woman avatars based on my Iridium uh, avatar. And we, we, we modeled it with Terry Mugler because uh, he just passed away. These are them. You could see that this is a Terry Mugler design, our adaption. And you could actually, Blake, show them how you could try on the outfit. I'm hopping back in right now. I happen to correct. So, if you don't do it the right way, you're going to ruin your brand. To me, everything is branding. Nike made the swish. I buy that sneaker because it has the swish. If you don't do it the right way, you're going to go back 10 years. So my advice to all these designers and all these brands, Slow down. Don't go into anything you don't know anything about. Come to ISG. Yeah, that, and, and, you know, I, I agree <laughs> with that. Plug. I, I agree with ISG. that, though. It's it's like a matter of um, you know a lot of big brands too. They're looking at uh, they're looking at individuals, and um, you know establishments are being built now, like ISG, and and we are housing the individuals and breeding, uh, you know, and, and also like assisting in them having a creative existence. Um, and so when big brands, you know, come in, they, they do exactly what Isaac said. They rush, they skedaddle, they're trying to get the bag, like a lot of NFT things. And if you ask me about the near future of NFTs as a whole, you're going to see a lot of projects die off. Why? Because they have no utility. The utility has been what I saw with the value of NFTs from the get-go, which was what does this do for me? What can it get me access to? It's not just a profile picture. This allows me to meet like-minded people have access to cool technology gets me entrance to events or something like that and that's kind of you know we're, we're encompassing all of that into um you know a professional fun brand inside the metaverse that yeah like he was just saying we're doing a fashion show oh whoops and um you know the inspiration uh, of it was terry moogler um and we went and we've obviously noticed uh, that isaac was a huge holder of these beautiful world of women characters and um the iridium was the one he wanted to wanted to portray and so what we what we did is we modeled these after and, and it's a great incentive as well uh, i'm just loading it really quickly Whoops. all right here we go let me just get myself calibrated in her so I can be full body tracking, um, but the, it's really wonderful to do, uh, you know, something like this where we bring in a NFT project that one is for women empowerment, which is wonderful to have more women in Web3 is, is a huge goal. 
um, but also to enable them the possibility to have this avatar in 3D and VR. Um, because, you know, a, a lot of you may not know that are watching the show that, you know, it's not just click, click, boom, you have an avatar uh, built or, or something like that. But instead, it's actually you want to make sure these things are, you know, um, very well built. These are all like bones and rigging. It's using a lot of things that, you know, the real world, like as far as the like, size of your body, like for Isaac's avatar, we had to have him measure it out. But I'll tell you what, we have a beautiful avatar because of it. And same with this, um, you know, and so the ability for this world of women, uh, uh, the whole community to come in and have a base mesh, a base model that then they can essentially build their customized uh, world of women character or, um, you know, allowing for makeup and eye changes, different hair, different colors of the clothing. Um, it's allowing for the future of personalization. It ties back to what Isaac was saying in retail, um, you know, and having sensory bits of clothing where we want you to be able to have the clothing both on your character in the metaverse that, you know, portrays your identity uh, in, in the space and along with on your physical self. Um, you know, and so we're, we're pu pulling together both NFT brands and physical brands to show them, you know, whether it's you, you just want your brand inside the metaverse, meaning you want to just have your Budweiser here and you want to also have a can and you also want to get a little buzzed. Oh, hold on, that one's not working. Here we go. Let's go up, oh, catch a little buzz. As you can see, I'm getting a little blurry. <laughs> uh, World of Women always loves Budweiser. They didn't pay me to say that, but that's all good. You can't really see what I'm doing anyways. Here we go. You know, I, I got to say, hey, what, can I say fault? something? Can I just say something? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What you just saw was we're the only ones that have it, which is called an avatar opt-in. So if you're talking about fashion and you design the line and you have the line in the showroom, Somebody goes in, they click on the avatar, and they try it on, and they're wearing it. This is this is revolutionary. What you're seeing now is something that nobody has, that nobody even knows how to do. For example, so I think it's really something that's. You asked about the future. You're going to go into stores. How do you try on an avatar? How do you uh, how do you wear it? How do you know if you like it? How do you touch it? How do you feel it? All of these things are going to be done in Samu. Show them the Jetson one, uh, Blake. I would love. So we designed, this is all part of our thing that we're going to show on the fashion show. And we like, like here, we designed a, a Jetson avatar. So you could see, you could try it on. You try Now, this, if you like it, you could wear it in Somni. You, you walk around, you go to the parties, you go to everything, and then you could rent it or you could buy it and we ship it to your home. So this is what you're seeing is revolutionary. Nobody ever thought of it. Nobody even knew how to do it. It's in 3D. It, and when you put it on, you feel like you're wearing it. And the goal, the goal is that people could be able to wear these within our parties, within our um, you know showrooms or, or whatever. And from there, if they wish to have the, the avatar itself as it is, they can purchase it. Or they can also, you know, do their quests and do our activations and tasks that we are not just using within our space, but all the communities within Insomnium space um, to earn this avatar. Um, you know, so creating a, a play to earn, not just play to earn, but it's time based engagement uh, is really what we're trying to do. And, and with high traffic environments, bring sponsorships. And, and so along with that, we're, we're wanting to reward our community members and really be, uh, you know, relevant to to their needs. And so we're, we're covering all bases and bringing in a lot of different creators to, um, you know, to exercise and, and to define what is this space. And, the, you know, this this one, the Jetsons, that was just one of Isaac's wild ideas. And it actually uh, we, we just got a new hairstyle, the actual Jetsons hairstyle. And um, also right now they're in updates for moving eyes and things to give it a little more realism. Um, and so Bla and Blake, yes, are you so the play what you said, if you come in and you spend time in, in, in your metaverse, you get sure. rewarded. Is that, is that how, is that how it's Correct. currently set up? Correct. So if you essentially, if you spend time in our events or uh, while you're in the space, you're going through and uh, like just up here, we actually just finished our first test. So um, this this gentleman with his zero over his head, he's actually telling me, Captain, you got to wake up all this. So basically what my goal with this was uh, was to find out how we can make one AIs interact with you Two objects interact with AIs and then making quests where essentially if I finish it, player tag reference and we can reward that individual. Um, and so for this instance, essentially, I've got this horn here. Um, this horn is if I put it next to my head, you can't hear it. But 
it's the it's sounding the horn and what this guy's telling me to do is to find all of the sailors around here so we can go sail off to boomtown and so uh let me show you there's a hailer a sailors hidden back here and you'll see he's sleeping let's wake this motherfucker up <laughs> so essentially like you know there's three of them as you can see this guy now has a one over his head um and you know we're right now working on different ui and, and ways of like signifying this you know in the past, I'm sure a lot of your users have played World of Warcraft. You know, they use exclamation marks or questions, question marks above their head to signify this person's looking to get a hold of you or whatever. Um, you know, and this goes into the next steps of even being able to, you know, do these quests to earn coin and then have pets and have things that, that are coming around helping you do more quests. Or, um, you know, even if we do a space galactic game where you have a crew of people and their AIs, that's your crew being able to earn you resources for the game while you're not even online. And, um, you know, cause there's a lot of different things. Not everybody is a gamer, but everybody is getting interested in web three and they're interested in communities. And so we're trying to make a universally acceptable area, meaning that we have something for everybody, but we want to make sure that we reward everybody because of, of the fact that they're making our space valuable along with us building the technology. And that's the future of web three is community. It's not about the corporation. It's about what you do for the people and the community itself. And as a whole, everyone will will benefit. And, and in the sense that one, you get cooler, better sponsors. Two, technology gets more insane. People establish this as their home, um, you know, meaning that this is where they make their place of business. And just as Somnium has done for us, giving us a platform to actually create a business um, inside of Web3, we're looking to do that at the next level of a layer two for a community to be able to come here, one, find a job, like even acting as this guy when we have high traffic, being the guy who's telling you that you have, um, you know, that you have to go wake up the sailors or running around with you, slash also uh, offering your services, such as being an entertainer to play music in here, um, you know, for, for a live event or to uh, give tours to people to showcase, you know, personalized tours as to how, how to exactly navigate this. And, um, you know, the, the future as it as it is, you can the never future really... the future is bright, Blake. The it, future it's is bright. I want to say I mean, it's beautiful, I brother. Think, I think this is very important. Uh, you know, you want to know what the future of NFTs are. I think look, I was an avid art collector. I own Andy Wall, I own Basquiat, I own Herring, I love pop art. And then I got into NFTs, and I think the apes were great and everything that they did with their organization and VFriends. And my collection is very astute. But I think the next generation of NFTs is going to be what you're seeing right here, right now in the metaverse. For example, if we want to, uh, you know, have a concert. We make smart contracts with NFTs that are the tickets. Everybody gets paid their proportion of what the contract is, and the cost, and our community will buy the NFT and hold it. That's where NFTs are going. Every single parcel on Somnium is an NFT. Every build is an NFT. Every item that people are going to mint clothes is an NFT. These avatars are NFTs. Accessories for these avatars are going to be NFTs. There's going to be a marketplace where people could buy the avatar and then make their own accessories and sell it on a secondary market. This is going to be the future of where NFTs are going. The art part had its day. It's, I think it's going to be limited to the blue chips. But now where is NFTs going? This is where it's going. Love it. So, I love what you guys are doing. Uh, how, do, how does somebody join ISG? How does somebody come in and, and play around? Um, give, give us the, the, the quick one minute. Where can people find you? Somebody wants to get involved and get behind the community. Where do they go? Blake. Huzzah. So they'll follow us first on Twitter and Instagram. Number two, you'll comment on this video telling the goats to have a actual podcast in the metaverse, <laughs> and then we'll all be together. But I would say absolutely join the Somnium Discord as well, um, because that's where we as a community are, are are sharing the ideas and getting people involved. You know, if you want to build on land, or if you want to, if you're an entertainer, you're you're a musician. 
um, you know, fun, uh, of course, reach out to us on Instagram and, and Twitter and things, but join the Discord, uh, Somnium Discord, and, and start joining our community. You know, say that you saw us on Goats in the Metaverse, um, and, you know, I'd be happy to, to get you involved and, like, showcase how you can build, you know, if you need resources, things like that. But just hop in to Somnium Discord, follow us on Twitter, and don't forget to like, subscribe this video because the goats are now actually in the metaverse. Let's go, baby. <laughs> well, <laughs> we love everything you guys are doing. Uh, I mean, I think this is awesome. Like I said, breaking first time interview from the metaverse. Isaac has his goat limited edition goats only hat. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. I enjoyed this conversation. We'll check in from time to time with you guys. You guys can tell us what new exciting things you're building. Wish you guys lots of love. Leave us a comment in the comments. Let us know what your favorite part was. We'll see you guys back here again. Manana, Isaac Blake, lots of love. Wish you guys all the best. Love you guys, man. Thank you again. Let's go.